Hey, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Tech of Tomorrow. We're bringing you all the tech all the time. I'm Elric, and today my co-host once again is JJ from ASUS. And today we're going to be taking a look at their UEFI BIOS all the way through their mainstream and ROG motherboards. Correct, sir? Correct. And actually, even the UEFI options that we're going to show on uh, the UEFI part, with the exception of the ROG ones, will also include tough NWS. Right on. So with that said, let's not talk anymore. Let's jump in and let's check out the UEFI. All right, folks, you guys can see right now we're in the UEFI BIOS. I've got JJ right here by my side, and he's going to take us through a guided tour and tell us some of the great new features that are coming out on Asus's latest products. Yep, you're 100% right, Doc. We're going to be covering some new features that we have as part of our Z87 series of motherboards. This will cover the mainstream series, the tough series, ROG series, and WS series, as well as even, let's say, value-oriented models like our Z87-A, as well as, of course, like our high-end boards like the Deluxe. So anybody watching this video, then any of the new motherboards that are coming out for you folks, by watching this video, they'll be able to apply these same settings to what they're doing in real time, correct? Correct. But definitely for guys who want to tweak and tune their system, they're going to want to make sure to check out our overclocking video, which is going to break it down in a whole other way as far as actually letting you know how to tweak and tune your system and be able to take advantage of the new fourth generation core series processor. All right. Well, let's just see some of the basic new features then. Okay, so here you can see we're actually in the easy mode interface. And the big thing that we want to try to do with easy mode is try to be able to add a bit more functionality to it. Uh, before, you had some great options in there, such as being able to go ahead and drag and drop different boot devices in sequential order so that you could go ahead and have defined one drive be the bootable volume versus the other. But we wanted to go ahead and extend that a bit further. So we've added something very basic, such as being able to go in and be able to make adjustments to your time and your date very simply. Um, not a big change, but one that was requested. A bigger one is actually right here. If you take a look at the DRAM information, we have a nice breakdown that shows us each one of the banks of memory. It's installed here. So here we have some great Kingston HyperX Beast memory, and that's installed. Now, one of the most frequently executed items uh, for users that are more enthusiast oriented and are purchasing memory kits is enabling XMP. Correct. Right? For a lot of users, they didn't necessarily know that they had to enable this or where to even enable it. Uh, guys like me and you that have been doing it for a long time, we know we have to go into the advanced property menu, the overclocking area, and then enable the XMP profile. It's true. I had many users before contact me and say they had no idea about just setting this simple XMP profile and getting that extra speed out of their memory. Correct. And now all they're going to have to do is just within easy mode, you can go ahead and click this one option. And from there, you can go ahead and select the profile. Kingston generally tends to offer two profiles for their XMP. Other vendors tend to only offer one profile. Uh, but from there, I can just go ahead and click it. It asks me if I want to load it and it will go ahead and apply it and that's it. So it's a one button execution of XMP, much simpler than you actually having to navigate into the advanced section, go under AI overclock tuner, and then go to manual and then set XMP profiling. It's much one click process. solution. Yeah. So a really nice, easy function for any type of enthusiast that wants to take advantage of their XMP related memory. Another option that we've gone ahead and incorporated here that's about streamlining the usability uh, is to go ahead and actually give you fan control functionality, but once again, accessible right here from the easy mode interface. So the user can go ahead and straight go right to this expansion tab and they can see actually each one of their fan headers, what it's running at, but if they want to go ahead and make a quick adjustment, I can just go ahead and set that to silent mode or I can keep that one in standard. Maybe if I've got a water cooling uh, pump connected to this other one, I could go ahead and you know set it to manual and then disable it within the manual fan options. So we offer a much more advanced level of functionality immediately right there inside of the easy mode function. So you don't have to worry about, once again, jumping into the advanced section just to make something as simple as an adjustment to your fan settings. What's this interesting thing right here that I see? It looks like a nice little diamond where you see performance, quiet, and energy saving. What's so that? This is a feature that we've actually already had in our previous generation uh, UEFIs, but it allows you to quickly tune your system for one profile or another. So if you want to have a quick kind of moderate overclock to your system, such as like a 4.25 gigahertz, and just go ahead and click on that button and it will automatically overclock your system in the click of a button. Uh, now this is advantageous because we have TPU switches and EPU switches on the motherboard. But what happens if you install your system inside the chassis, but you still want to take advantage of that TPU switch function, right? You don't want to actually have to open it up. Correct. Now you can just go inside the UEFI, click this optimal button and you're good to go. So normal is going to be stock. Optimal is going to be an overclock, and power saving is going to go ahead and do that undervolt to be able to go ahead and conserve some power, be able to reduce the thermal footprint, and maybe extend a little bit of the CPU lifespan. So down here, of course, we maintain the drag and drop boot priorities. Uh, we also gone ahead and incorporated this great easy option for SATA information. So I can go ahead and click on this, and it will show me a real-time preview of all my drives as they're connected, so I know which ports they're on right at this easy mode interface. So you can see a couple of touches, but overall add a lot more accessibility and usability straight off the bat here inside of the easy mode UEFI environment. Now, 
us being a course here at Tech of Tomorrow, and we have a lot of advanced users that when do we wanna see maybe the more advanced functionality, of course, we still keep the advanced mode. So we're just gonna go ahead and reset things back to default, and we're gonna jump into the advanced mode. There we go. So immediately off the bat, doesn't necessarily look too different, but there are gonna be some really big changes in terms of some key functionality that you have to offer. Which is the AI tweaker? I, AI tweaker is actually what we've previously always offered in terms of tweaking all our performance related options like frequency, multipliers, and voltages. But well, the first one that's gonna be special right here is this item that's called Quick Note. And what this is actually gonna allow you to do is actually create real-time notes inside of your UEFI that could persistently be saved. So an example might be if I'm working with my platform, I'm tweaking it, I'm overclocking it, and I figure out, okay, hey, I need to be able to overclock 4.6 gigahertz is gonna require 1.2 uh, volts with no line load calibration, I can make a note of that. So I can go ahead and go uh, to be able to complete stable overclock had to define 1.2 volts for a 46x multiplier. And you can go ahead and save that information. Now, how many of those can you actually save in there? How many different separate notes? Or is it just one solid note? It's one solid note, but there's breaking amongst it. So, of course, you could just go ahead and, you keep know. Keep adding all the way keep, down. Keep, keep adding out and as, as you want. So you have that flexibility. You could, of course, add if you want to even break it down by date and time. Just go ahead and store that information there when you're first typing it out to say that's with this information or that information. So we feel this adds a whole new level of functionality and versatility so that, you know, for guys, when they're tweaking and tuning your systems, a lot of times you sometimes have a piece of paper and a pen. Exactly. You're exactly. writing down your notes. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Right. You can just right save, it, save it all inside of the UEFI. You can take advantage of it. And when you reboot back in, if you need to reference that information, you just bring up your quick note and bam, you have all that information right yeah, there. That's definitely to. one very, very interesting new feature. And the great thing is, like I said, is it's not going to just be reserved for, we're using a Z87 Deluxe Series board, but this is going to be on the Z87-A. So even our entry level uh, value oriented board is going to be able to offer you this functionality and this versatility. That's excellent. So we can go ahead and quit out, quit out of that and keep moving along. Now, one of the next options that we uh, have got incorporated is my favorites. This is a really cool way to be able to define the UEFI in an easy, accessible way. A lot of times there's lots of different options that are spread out throughout the UEFI, and you might not necessarily need to have access to every single part of the UEFI because you just consistently use same portions of it over and over and over again, right? So we've previously had an F3 option, which is great, which is our integrated shortcut functionality. So you can go ahead and have different options here that we predefined for you that would allow you to jump to different parts of the UEFI. For this generation, we've expanded on shortcut and added my favorites. So what you can do is essentially go in here and we can fully modify whatever shortcuts you have available to you. So let's say we can go ahead and take these out here and I can add whatever I want. So let's say first off the bat, I wanna go ahead and maybe add something like serial ATA configuration, right? I can go ahead and go to F4 and I can add it to my favorite page. Uh, or excuse me, I can go to and add it to my shortcut page. Um, so you can see right here, if I go to F3, it's now set a configuration is available to me. If I wanna go ahead and maybe go to AI overclock tweaker and I wanna be able to reach this section, I can once again go here and I can add it to that page. I can go ahead and add it to my shortcut page. So now you can notice that I have now AI clock over tuner there and I can go and, and set those options right off the bat from within that quick shortcut environment. And you can add multiple items to that my favorite page as well as you can go ahead and add multiple items to the shortcut page. So you can see like maybe once again also if I want maybe something like my fan control functionality for like my CPU fan header, I can go ahead and add that as well. And now I have those options real time available to me there. So I can always, let's say even if I'm now here at the main screen, right? I want to jump straight over to that. Now it'll take me straight to that section. Yeah, most people only use actually a few of the options in the BIOS. And like you say, they go back and forth those all the time. So that's a pretty cool thing, like having your own quick shortcut way. Correct, and it's fully definable by you. So you can always go at any time if you want to go ahead and remove these. You can just remove it from your My Favorites page, as well as you could go ahead and make adjustments to your shortcut page. Or you can just go ahead and maybe I don't want that option anymore. I don't want that option anymore and I don't want that one anymore. It's fully adjustable, controllable by you, but it allows you to have so much more flexibility in terms of just making sure that you have immediate, easy access to the sections of the UEFI that you use most consistently. Yeah, that's actually a really excellent option. So moving from there, we've also expanded on some other items. So one of them that's really cool here is under a SATA configuration. So if we go into this option, and let's say you go over to here, you can see that I've gone ahead and have some interesting names, right? If you look, it says SATA, SATA 6G2 yellow, right? But it actually gives you a name. 
how do I have a name inside the UEFI? So did you name it yourself? That's correct. So uh, this actual system is set up in a RAID configuration, um, which we went ahead and loaded default, so that's why it's not listing as RAID. But now what we have the flexibility to do is that we can go in and we can rename any single port. Oh, that's really um, cool. So if you can imagine if you have maybe two, three, four hard drives, you know, in one of my systems at home, I have four two terabyte hard drives and they're all from the same vendor, right? And so when they show up in my UEFI, I don't know actually which drive might be which drive and which was connected to which port, right? So sometimes maybe if you're doing partitioning or you're deleting, maybe secure racing volumes, you always kind of have that worry, hey, you know, which drive is it that I'm working you on? You gotta remember it. Right, you gotta remember. And that's like, <laughs> even on our RG boards, why we had those uh, those uh, SATA cable uh, labels that you could put on the drives to make this easier. But now I can go ahead and just click on this. This is much better. And I can go ahead and actually delete this. So if I want to call this, you know, uh, RAID volume drive one, that's it. I can go ahead and rename it. And it's persistent. Even when you reboot and save the UEFI, you'll consistently now have these labels associated to whatever drives that you have attached to that. So it allows you to just always have a more kind of personalized level of information on how you have your system set up. So you can imagine, you know, maybe if uh, I don't have anything connected to that volume, but let me be, let's say, if I want to say that's where I have, you know, my, uh, you know, that's my Steam, you know, uh, games directory, right? I know that that drive is that you always know, a good drive to protect yes 100 <laughs> percent um you know or if you had that maybe that's your personal backup or that's your photo volume that's your you know your video volume whatever it might be you just now have the flexibility you can go in and you can rename it to whatever you want one thing i want to talk about up here jj is it's not off awesome too much but up here on the sata mode selection button mm -hmm. a lot of users still contact me and they don't know that uh, you can change the settings in there to make your actually hard drive performance better they always want to set it to the standard. They don't really understand that you can set it to HCI and get much better performance. Yeah, I mean, the lucky thing is with all ASUS series motherboards, we default to AHCI operation. That's um, excellent. So that makes sure that you're already getting the best SATA performance right off the bat. You don't need to worry about changing that, but you're 100% right, you know, that if you were using a potentially competitor's board that could be defaulting into compatibility or ID mode and you're using a new generation SSD. You and a lot of users don't know that making that simple change has a big impact on performance. 100%, you're correct. So, you know, this we think is another, once again, really valuable level of functionality, which is about us ultimately helping to show that what we're most interested in is not just adding something that looks interesting, but ultimately something that we feel that we want users to be able to use at the it's end of the functionable. day. functionable. Yeah, correct. So that's a, another great option that we've gone ahead and incorporated inside of the UEFI. And when you add that together with other aspects like the F12 uh, print screen function, which of course allows you to save screenshots of every single section to the UEFI, as well as let's say inside the UEFI where you can go in and you can go into the advanced fan control functionality and be able to define full manual operation per each one of the headers, uh, you know, for three pin or four pin control, uh, that adds even more versatility. Now, a lot of time you also go into the UEFI and you make a lot of changes. So an example might be if I'd say I was gonna go ahead and overclock my system, I might enable XMP and then I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and set maybe my multiplier information. So I set that. And then maybe I'm going to define something else here. And then I want to go ahead and make an adjustment in terms of my power configuration. I'm going to say that. I'm going to go ahead and, and make all these other little changes, right, that you might do when you're tweaking and tuning your system. Sometimes you might not necessarily remember everything that you're doing, right? And so a great thing that we're now offering is going to be this last modified function. So you can see here that when we actually complete a change to the system, um, we can save a history of those things that are being executed upon. So it'll save right to your USB the same as like taking all the pictures of the BIOS screens? Um, no, so you can see right here. So I went to go save and exit, right? And when I went to go save and exit, if you notice, it gave me a history of all the little things that I've changed now. So it gives you this great visual snapshot hey, these are all the changes that you've made. So right before you save, you can kind of get a verification. Okay, I set that adjustment in terms of the frequency, the voltages, the load line calibration, all those things that I wanted to go ahead and be conscious of. And you can see it all in one screen, so you don't have to scroll back through a bunch of different windows as well. Correct, because you might not even remember. Sometimes you're maybe reading a forum post, you're watching a video, or exactly. you're doing something else and you don't remember. So now we've given you essentially a consolidated history of all those levels of adjustment. And the great thing is once you go ahead and actually execute your reboot and you make your adjustments, you can also go into the last modified section. And as you saw, if you wanted to then save that and output it to a USB flash drive, just like when you're doing the F12 print screen, you can also track the data in that way as well. That's really cool. 
So that uh, hopefully shows you some of the really cool features and functionality that we have integrated inside the UEFI that we feel helps to also maintain uh, the great functionality and versatility of what we feel that we're bringing to the table. Uh, now, as you would expect, uh, there's even going to be some further options that are exclusive to ROG, uh, which we're going to show in a little bit that cover also the complete scope of options that we have available. Now, the very last thing that we do want to touch on is that we have gone ahead and incorporated a new function um, that's called OC Tuner, which we had in a previous generation but it's been tuned for a little bit more flexibility as well. So for users that sometimes want to be able to take advantage of a quick way of auto overclocking their system, instead of having to go through our software, if you don't feel like loading that or installing your system or using the GPU switches, and you want maybe a little bit more aggressive in overclock, you can now go ahead and go in here. Leave as is. And you can select either ratio only or BCLK first. And what that means is it'll automatically attempt to auto overclock the system through adjusting the ratio of the CPU multiplier or adjusting the BCLK. And it will do that dynamically without actually the requirement of any software. Now, because we don't have an OS and you can't fully stress test um, to the degree that we can with our audio tuning technology, the result won't be as high, but it'll still be a little bit more aggressive than the standard options that we have available. So another cool functionality that we've integrated within the UEFI. Just another great option for overclocking. Yep. All right, folks, so there you have it, the UEFI BIOS, all its options from mainstream and ROG. You know, JJ, you did a great job covering all that stuff. Those are all kinds of different kinds of options in your guys' new UFI, including, you know, something we didn't talk about is being able to just use a mouse. So very simply and eloquently, not having it bounce around or jiggity jaggity. With yours, it just smoothly goes through and able to click all those options. Something that a lot of people will appreciate. No, I 100% agree, and actually thanks for calling it out because it's something that we've worked really hard on is that not just the feature set inside the UE5, but even the general responsiveness of it, and even things like being able to key in manual entry values, good simplified layout in terms of knowing where things are, are accessible to you. Um, they all come down to making sure that when you go inside that environment and you're working within it, it's a smooth, positive experience versus, like you said, something where it's hopping in and out, maybe you have weird transitions or animations. It just kind of can be sometimes an inconsistent yeah. or frustrating experience. Experience. Now, you guys all know that ASUS has always been a pioneer when it comes to overclocking stuff. And you can see that all of these motherboards have really awesome overclocking features. Whether you're just somebody who doesn't know jack diddly about it, you can click a button and get some easy, simple overclocking. Or if you're an advanced user who knows his stuff, you can go in there and modify and trick this thing out just all kinds of different ways. 100% agree with that. I mean, uh, definitely the UEFI, though, we feel also even adds value uh, with even functions like the Quick Note or the SATA renaming, um, you know, or the easy fan control functionality we now have in the easy mode to even users that aren't overclocking centric. So we've tried to give you guys a great balance of features that benefit the overclockers, the standard users, and the enthusiasts who cross both lines as far as needing things that are sensible and functional, but also are looking for performance and in functionality. And, you know, at the same time, too, we'd love to hear you guys' feedback on things that you would love to see incorporated. Uh, you know, sometimes there's going to be differences at what can actually be done and what can't be done, but we always love to hear the feedback. So you guys hear that down in the comment section below. We're looking to hear your comments. So tell us if you're a fan of ASUS and you use their UFI BIOS, go ahead, man. Give us your opinions, your thoughts. We always want to hear them here on Tech of Tomorrow. Thank you, JJ, for once again coming Thanks, out boss. and being here. And we've got more stuff coming up, including overclocking. And well, you'll see. We'll see you guys back here on Tech of Tomorrow.